Good morning. If anyone has any announcements, we'd ask that you come up and make any announcements that you may have um, prior to us getting the service started. So if you've got any announcements, would you please come forward with any of your announcements? I would just like to remind everybody about our Annie Armstrong uh, offering. Uh, our goal this year was 4,500, and uh, we're not quite there yet. So if uh, the Lord still lays it on your heart to, uh, uh, to give to that, we would like to meet that goal, if at all possible, and give God the praise and glory for it. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we will have a special meeting of the church council tomorrow evening at 7 and it will be uh, the dial-in, so it'll be all virtual. So uh, just use the dial-in number for 7 p.m. tomorrow evening, um, and I will also send out a reminder via email. Thanks. Good morning. I have two announcements um, and then a statement. My well, first announcement, Friday night, here in the Fellowship Hall Worship Center, the Act Teens will be having another game night at 6 p.m. If you missed the last one, I'm sorry that you missed it, but we had a great time. So come out and um, join us this Friday night. Bring your games and your family and your appetite. We'll have hot dogs, potato chips, and drinks. Second announcement, looking for some stompers and some chompers. Get ready for Vacation Bible School. It's going to be, I can't find my phone, and the dates in the church bulletin are wrong. I think it's the 26th is the Monday through the 30th. It's the very last week of June. Thanks, Sonny. It's the 26th through the 30th. Um, if you would like to help with Vacation Bible School, please see me as soon as possible. We are going to do a, um, we'll do one Sunday afternoon or after church to do everybody's background checks, do them all at one time as a group. Um, I will be getting registration information probably in the next couple of weeks for you all to be able to register your children. So let's um, get geared up for that. If you would start praying for us as we start to prepare, I would greatly appreciate that. Um, I have not said this in a while, but check on your friends and family. Um, people are hurting. People are sad. People are mad. People are depressed. People are anxious um, and all of the above. So please, please, please check on your friends and family. Thank you. As a reminder, um, the kids will not be dismissed today. They'll be staying in for the full service because of the great baptisms that we'll be having um, with some of our wonderful kids that we do have in our children's ministry. And next Sunday for the parents, if the weather is decent, me and Esther are planning on having um, the children's worship um, outside on the pavilion and be on the playground. So we'll confirm that next week. Just want to see how the weather will be. Um, but parents just plan accordingly for that. Thank you. Okay, the service isn't going to officially start until 10, so you don't have to sit there and be quiet. You can, you can congregate and converse. Thank you.
Um, in the Lord's Prayer, one of the phrases says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? And I'm going to read. Um, we've heard many times about when um, new converts have come up that the angels in heaven rejoice. Okay, so if the angels in heaven are rejoicing, if God wants thy will on earth as it is in heaven, I think it's our due diligence here to this morning to praise and to worship this morning because we have three new converts. So I want to read something to you this morning before we actually get started. It says, in a far greater way, Jesus said, we are infinitely, infinitely valuable to God. When we are lost and separated from him, he searches for us and does everything he can possibly do to rescue us. And when we finally realize just how lost we are and turn to him in repentance and faith, he rejoices and all heaven with him. And it says, Jesus said, I tell you, there's rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sin sinner who repents. And that comes from Luke 15, 10. Then it asks, why do they rejoice? It says, not because they're surprised, but because a great victory has been won. It says, someone has been snatched from the jaws of Satan and death. And so it says, why don't we all rejoice? It says, Jesus' words remind us of how valuable we are to God and how much he yearns for us to be with him in heaven and forever. And this was a decision that LaVon, Milan, and Xavier has made. It's a decision that many of us sitting in here has made, but it may be a decision that someone in here right now hasn't made, okay? And if you haven't made that decision, um, we're going to talk about that a little later. So before we get started, let's, let's just bow our heads in silence. I ask that you cast the cares of the uh, world away, that you um, just focus on what we are here this morning. We're here to listen to the preached word. We're here to observe the, the baptism of our three candidates, our three um, new brothers and sisters um, in Christ, and just um, focus on honoring and glorify God. So just have a, let's have a few uh, just a little piece, minute of silence, minute of silence. Okay. If you're able, I'd ask that you stand. I call to worship. How ironic. Here I am to worship. If you're able, I'd ask that you stand. Here I am to worship. Amen. Let us pray. Father and matchless God, we just thank you, God. I just thank you for everyone that's here this morning, dear God. I thank you for the um, traveling grace that you bestow bestowed upon them. I pray, dear God, that we're here to worship in spirit and truth, dear God. I thank you for, um, for understanding that and um, in, in supporting us as we know we're not perfect by any means that you love us, but also helping us understand, dear God, that you've commissioned us to be faithful to you and your word. I'd ask that you support us, convict us, um, do whatever you need to do necessary, dear Lord, to help us with our walk with you. Um, if we have to do a spiritual inventory, whatever that Whatever that consists of, dear God, be with us. I just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. I thank you for the, the three young candidates, dear God. I thank you for their families, dear God, to, that saw that need that has established that foundation for these three young individuals in, in Christ. And I pray that we as a church, we as family, we as friends, walk beside them, dear Lord, to encourage them to direct, to um, influence, whatever that may look like, dear God. I just once again thank you for this day. I thank you for every family that's represented, dear God. I pray that you look out for them and guide and direct them. I, 
I pray that you bless Pastor Jay, dear God, the shepherd of our flock. Just continue to, to bless and guide him, dear God, and just help us, dear God, as we later on um, we take the Holy Communion, dear God, and understand the, what that means that we're doing this in remembrance of you. I just ask in advance that um, that your hand is upon all that we say and we that we do in the service, and that it puts a smile on your face. I just ask all these things in your holy and precious name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Welcome, welcome. I'm Darren Holmes. I'm one of the deacons, one of the deacons here at Samaria. I see we've got a lovely crowd. I just, these kids see the support that they have from their families. Um, if you need to go into the bathrooms, um, if you go out the double doors, go to your right. The bathrooms are down by the water fountain, but we're just so thankful that you're here with us this morning. We um, want to welcome those who are viewing on Facebook as we speak. We hope that you get a blessing. We welcome those who are going to be viewing on YouTube later in the week, and we just thank God for the tools that he's given us here at Samaria that we can reach out to those who aren't able to be here. And also to those who are in the parking lot, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your th thank you for your faithfulness as well. And for those of you, we'll be here next Sunday too. If you want to come back, if you want to come back, just want to thank you. And I'm just so excited about our service, about our baptism. I talked to Xavier on Wednesday night, and he said, "Mr. Darren," he said, "I'm excited. I'm excited. I can't wait." Yesterday, I when um. I was talking to, to Milan. Milan wanted to get in the baptismal pool yesterday. I said, no, buddy, we got to wait. Then this morning, he said, I want to go now. So with the enthusiasm of these young kids, I pray that they rub off on us because we need to encourage them and be enthused and just as happy as they are. Okay, just as enthused and as happy as they are. Okay, well, I think that takes care of the, um, the greeting. Um, Miss Laura, if you come up for Children's Church. Hmm? All right, all that little ones, come on up, come on up, come on up. <laughs> morning. Y'all all look so beautiful. And I'm sorry if my voice is a little raspy. Pollen is just not my friend sometimes. We have all the kids. We can make room. We, we can make room over here if any other kids want to come. All right. Who's excited to be here today? All right, amen. I am. All right. So the past couple weeks, we've been talking about how God gave us the Holy Spirit. And then last week, we talked about Jesus and his resurrection and how the Holy Spirit is, our, is the bridge between so that we can communicate and talk to God. But now what are we going to talk about? What do y'all think's next? Does anybody know? Layla? Hmm? Yeah, that was last week. Does anybody have an idea of what's next? What's to come? Elena? Huh? Yeah. All right, I'll help y'all out. So, it's called the Great Commission. And so now, we can all celebrate and live our lives through Christ but we can't just keep it to ourselves, okay? We have to tell other people about God and how great he is and how his love is for us. In Matthew 28, verses 18, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in and heaven on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. 
And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So that's a pretty big thing we have to do about telling how important God is to everybody. Is it scary? Do y'all get nervous if you want to talk to God about people? What do y'all think? Y'all are confident in sharing about Jesus? Y'all are? Well, sometimes... Good, because I get nervous sometimes. But in this command that God has given us, he also gave us a promise. And that means the promise is that he is always going to be with us. So as long as we let God lead us and help us and we have the Holy Spirit help us, God will always be with us. Now I have a demonstration I'm going to show. Well, two. All right. So I have this balloon here. Um, I'm going to drop it, and it's going to do something really, I feel like it's going to do something really exciting. Do you think it is? Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's count it. Let's count this one down, okay? So five, four, three, two, one. Oh, maybe it didn't quite do anything like I thought it was going to do. So this is us, okay? But... Mr. Darren is going to help, but he's going to blow up the balloon. He already has it. If we allow Jesus and the Holy Spirit to come inside of us when we share the word, all right, now it doesn't matter where this is going to go. We're not going to jump up and try to get it. We'll get it after, okay? So now that we have Jesus in us, the Holy Spirit is in us. He's going to help us every day of our life. All right, Darren, release it. Okay, well, it got hung on the flower. It's okay. But it went everywhere, right? A little bit, right? At home when we did it, it went, it went crazy. But normally when you release a balloon, what happens? It flies, and there's no telling where it's going to go, okay? And if you allow God to be with you and to help you, there's no telling where you're going to go or where your word of Jesus is going to reach somebody, Okay. So do you think we can always be bold in sharing? We can try. All right. Now I have something I'm going to give y'all, and it's coloring sheets, and you're going to color it, and you can cut it out and glue it together, and it's called the Gospel Cross, okay? So it talks about how God is the perfect king. And in the beginning, God created everything, and he created you and how much he loves you. And it says, for God so loved the world. Hold on real quick. And then it talks about how we all sin and how we fall short of the glory of God. But God sent Jesus onto the, into the world and how much he loves us and how perfect Jesus was and that he died for us. And what does that make? A cross. And on the back, it says, believe that Jesus is the living Savior. And he has risen, and now we need to tell everybody the good news. So y'all will be able to make y'all's own little crosses. Y'all can color them however you want. You can read about it, and then you can share it with somebody, okay? You think y'all might want to try to do something like that? Maybe? Yes, Chloe. He did make the grown-ups first, you're right, yeah. All right, now does anybody want to pray? Anybody want to help pray? You want to help pray? Okay. God, well, thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone came to church. And I hope all Giddy and Lodi came to church today. And I hope everyone, if everyone at home really feels better with, with our ear and and. And I, and I hope they come to church tomorrow. And I, and I hope we see Uncle Will off the Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Um, if you are planning on coming to church tomorrow, you need to coordinate that with Pastor Jay so he'll be here. Yep. Amen. Amen. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Miss Laura. This time we've come to prayers of the church, and before we do that, if does anyone have a testimony? 
Oh, does anybody have a testimony or something that they want to share with us? If you do, I'd ask that you come up so we can hear you and so everyone on Facebook. Come on, Jesse. Come on, Jesse. Yeah, come on, brother. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I'd like to thank all y'all for the prayers. And we can see what prayers will do for you, on, God, because I'm here today. Come on now. And the cards and the ones who come to see me, I thank each and every one of you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Jesse. Does anyone else have something they want to share? Um, yeah. Yesterday, I, me and my wife had a blessing. Um, we'd come up here to the church, and we were on our way home, and we went back back um, on our way home and we looked and that Helene was out in the driveway in her little portable mobile unit just laid back and baby girl said you think she's stuck <laughs> I, I don't know so we turned around and went back and we probably stayed a half an hour didn't we Aunt Helene and it was just a blessing um you know, just a blessing that we had our opportunity, and I told Aunt Helene that I felt bad. I told her that um, when I'm able to come by there, I don't, and I thought something was wrong, and that's what led me there, and I need to do a better job of visiting those people, and I think we all need to do a better job of visiting those who, um, who are not able to get out and about, but it was just a truly a blessing that the time that we we shared yesterday together and I just thank you Aunt Helene for blessing us yesterday yeah. wow. and I didn't cook it yeah that was the that was the blessing uh, any others anyone else is God doing something in your life something you want to share yes sir come on brother Brother Darren was talking about blessings, and uh, you never know when you get them, when you're going to receive on, them. Come on, come on, come on. And um, it's been uh, almost two years now. Pastor Jay said, you know, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Mm. And I've been praying to God. I said, you know, to use me, your will, not mine. And I kept praying, and I kept praying. And then I heard about there were openings in the church. Mm -hmm. And I found out, well, there's a Sunday school teacher. I'm not good at that. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I can do something with my hands, help people out something in that way. Well, I come home after church, and I got a text, congratulations for stepping up. <laughs> and I asked my wife, Cordy, who's a deacon here, she said, uh, I said, is this a joke? I said, did I, or did I do something I forgot I'd done? And she said, no, I volunteered you to be a Sunday school <laughs> teacher. <laughs> and the first thing that came into my mind was your will, not mine. And I said, well, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try right. And it's been such a blessing on, beyond what I could ever imagine. Amen. And, you know, I, did, I, was, I was willing to turn it down, but, but I, I said, well, you know, your will, not will, and not uh, mine. And it's been such a blessing, and I'm so thankful. And I don't consider myself a Sunday school teacher so much. It's just sharing the word. Come on. And I just Come get on. so excited, and I hope, I hope the kids get something out of uh, what I say, but I'm just thank God for that. That's right. Yeah. Also, one other thing, yesterday me and Miss Gail had a conversation, and she was just so happy. We, uh, we had purchased our, um, our, um, our unit to house our flowers, and that was one of the that flowers are beautiful, and we'd get flowers, and within days that they were they they would be wilted. And um, Miss Gail said some of the flowers we have in our unit now we've had since February, and we just want to thank God for blessing us for her idea that we something we needed to purchase, and we see the the, the fruits of our labor, and just thank you, Miss Gail, for all that you do and keeping this church looking pretty on, on Sundays with the flowers and all the other things that you do. And we just want to thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, sweetheart. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
Good morning, church. Not only does the Lord bless me every morning when he wakes me up, allows me to see the glorious day that he has provided, but ever since Seth has had his heart attack and his stroke for the last 10 months, he has blessed me and allowed me to wake up with him every morning by my side. That's right. And our God is good. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, amen. We take it for granted, don't we, Cheryl? We take it for granted, church. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Good evening. Good morning, young lady. Either one, brother. Either one, brother. Good morning. Hello. Hey, hello. My name is Colby, and this is my first time here. My wife, Rebecca, <laughs> kept telling me, you know, you should go up there. It's a lot of great people, and it's, it's different. And um, this gentleman up here said, say a testimony. Well, last um, two Fridays ago, I went to go pick up my friend. And long story short, he died on the passenger seat of my car. So I rushed him to the emergency room, and I'm praying and trying to smack him. Like, hey, it's why I wake up. And long story short, again, he, um, he died twice. They brought him back. I got him there in time to where they was able to revive him. He died again when they was there. They said he wouldn't make it and called my wife and asking her to pray and call everybody. And just like she said, she said, if it's in God's will. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you're right about that. But he is alive today. After, <laughs> yeah, after that, um, found out, uh, I told him if he didn't believe in God when he was unconscious that same night, I went up and was like, man, wake up. And I'm like, if you, if you don't believe in God now, he make you do this, man. You got one testimony, like one crazy testimony. Um, but he had, after he, he survived, uh, come to find out two days later, he had two blocked arteries going to his heart and uh, infection in his blood. So, oh, man. But still, so far today, he's alive. And I just hope he does pick up that book because you could, so much can happen just from, right. just, just seek. It says in there, seek, right. you know, you can start there. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you, Kobe. Come on, Mr. Hank. Bring it on, brother. Good morning, church. Oh, backing that up now, about three years ago, you all know that uh, I was on a ventilator twice. First time around, I was brought in under a coat, and I coated twice that night. Pastor Jay told me that first time around. He can back you up on that. But anyway, I'm 63 today, so I'm here. Thank you, church. Thank you. Someone else, someone else, anyone else, anyone else, okay. If we don't have anyone else, I've asked Julian if he would, if he would come up and, and present the prayers and the praises of the church, and um, he told me to announce in advance, um, he might not get your name right, but God knows who it is, God knows who it is. Good morning. Yeah, Darren come to me this morning and said that uh, Elena, she usually picks who she wants to say the prayer request. And, uh, and I wonder why in the world she picked me, and y'all <laughs> probably do the same thing. <laughs> but nevertheless, but I'm not going to uh, try to announce these names. God, God knows who they are. He, knows, he knew for y'all he put them down here. And uh, I want to thank God for looking after me for the last year or so. I struggled a little bit, but I'm, I'm still here. I ain't, I ain't going nowhere. I don't rank it anyway. But nevertheless, uh, I thank God for looking after me and my family. So this time, I, I, I'll pray for these prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for waking us up again this morning to see another day. 
And Lord, you know, there's a lot of people that laid down last night that didn't see daybreak this morning. But you seem fit for us to wake up this morning and come up to see your, all your creation and come into your house and worship you, Lord, and give you all the praise and glory that you deserve, Lord. Lord, you, you know everybody's need that's on this prayer request. I don't have to call them all. You know them one by one. And Lord, if it's your will, you will answer these requests for these people, Lord. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for my many sins and bless each one that has come out here this morning, Lord, that they might get some out of this service, Lord, and be with the candidates that will be put down in the water. They will come back with being fresh. And, Lord, that they will be children for you as, as well as us. And, Lord, let them understand that life is not easy. It's not easy at all, Lord. They will have stumbling blocks to hit them, but, Lord, but like you said, you'll be with us always to the end of the world. And I believe that, Lord, so we thank you and we praise you. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. This time, if you're able, I'd ask that you stand. We're going to sing Shine, Jesus, Shine is our praise song. Shine, Jesus, Shine.
be seated. Got a question I want to ask you before I turn the service over to Pastor Jay. Uh, are you afraid to dial 911? If you are, if, are you afraid? Are you, raise your hand if you're afraid. Raise your hand if you're not afraid to dial 911. Okay? That's something we will do automatically, isn't it? We'll dial, if, if someone is, Kobe, um, he may have dialed 911 before he even got to the hospital, but he saw a friend in need. Okay. There may be a something going on in your life right now. Something going on in your life right now that you need to get right with God. Okay. We'll pick up that phone and dial 911 won't even, without even thinking about it. There's something that's going on in your life now that may need to, you may need to dial 911. There may be a relationship with somebody in your life that may need to, to be rekindled. Um, there may be something going on with your spouse, your parent. I don't know what that is, but God does. And we need what um, said, I can call Jesus anytime. Think now we need to call Jesus. I see what's going on around us, and it's a lot of tragedy. It's it's hatred. It's prejudice. It's just so much stuff going on in this world. I talked to a guy yesterday, and we were talking about the young kids that are going to be baptized this morning, and the things that our kids are exposed to are far greater than it. What we what when I came up, you know they can. You know, with Clo-Clo, I'll give her the iPad, and she goes on about her business. I don't turn it on, don't do anything. I just hand it to her, okay? Um, kids are seeing much, seeing so much more than what we saw, and we need Jesus. I heard this sermon um, last week, and there's two things um, the pastor talked about. And he uh, talked about coming to the altar, you know, talked about the altar call. Um, he said, we've gotten away from that. He said, back in the day, I told y'all, one time baby girl and I went to a church, and they had the altar call, and when I looked up, her and I were the only two that weren't at the altar. You know, the whole church was at the altar, you know, and it didn't matter to them why they were at the altar. They just knew they needed to be there. They were calling 911. Uh, that cross is open. That cross is open for us. And he said, the pulpit is to pull you out of the pit, all right? And he said, the altar is there to alter your life. So if you need your life altered, if, you need, if you're in a pit, you fill in the blank. I don't know what that pit may be. But um, later on in the service, we're going to have an invitational hymn. And it's something that just doesn't set right. If your heart's beating, if your stomach is rumbling, that's God tugging at your heart string. Go to that altar. Go to that altar and get right with God. Tomorrow's not guaranteed, is it, Kobe? Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Our next hour is not guaranteed, okay? Kobe's buddy had a second chance. We may not get that second chance. We may not be that second chance. Pastor Jay. Good morning, church. Good to see you today. I'm excited uh, to be here and excited to see you folks here and uh, have a baptism, but I do. I'm glad uh, Darren brought that up about the invitation because the way it sets in the uh, bulletin today, we're going we're gonna to change things around. Uh, after the message, I'm going to have an invitational hymn, and it'll be the one that's in uh, the bulletin. And uh, when we close, we'll go with Alleluia, if that'll be all right. Okay? So we're going to switch that around a bit. Anyway. So grateful that you're here today, and uh, if you will, turn in your Bibles to John 21, uh, and we'll be looking at verses 15 through 17, and, and let's stand as we uh, 
uh, read the word together, if you are able, please. Beginning at uh, verse 15. John 21, beginning at verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Heavenly Father, Help us to be uh, about the business of your kingdom. Help us, Lord, to, uh, to reach out to the world around us and to be the people that you have created us to be. We're, uh, we ask, God, that you would just fill us to overflowing with your spirit, uh, that we would uh, exude that joy and uh, love and hope and encouragement that uh, people all around us are so desperate in need of. And Father, we just pray that you'd speak to our hearts through the power of your spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. In the 1930s, a Mr. Ivy Lee, a management consultant, was given a private interview with Charles Schwab who at the time was one of the most powerful men in the world. Lee told Schwab if his company would follow his advice, the company's operations and profits would both increase. Schwab said, I'll be glad to listen, and if it works, I'll pay you whatever you ask within reason. Lee told Schwab, write down your greatest priorities for what you have to do tomorrow. Schwab did so. Lee then said, now put them in the order of importance. Tomorrow, start on number one and stay with it until it's complete. Then go to number two and stay with it until it's complete. Then number three, then number four, and so on. Don't worry if you haven't completed everything by the end of the day. At least you will have completed the most important projects. Do this every day. After you have been convinced of the value of this system, have your employees try it. Try it as long as you like, then send me a check for whatever you think the idea is worth. A few weeks later, Charles Schwab sent Mr. Ivy Lee a check for $25,000, an astronomical amount of money at that time. Schwab said it was the most pro uh, profitable lesson he had ever learned in his long business career. In business, and indeed in all of life, few lessons are more important than learning how to prioritize our life and live by those priorities. Over the last two and a half months, we have looked at the last seven sayings of Jesus from the cross. Chief Steve Atkins uh, shared the story behind uh, Palm Sunday and Jesus' triumphant entry into uh, the city uh, of Jerusalem. And last Sunday, our choir and our children helped us to celebrate the resurrection of our risen, living Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today, today, we see where Jesus makes a surprise visit to his disciples on the shores of Galilee. At the encouragement of Peter, the disciples 
had all gone fishing. They had fished all night and caught nothing. But the next morning, Jesus called out to them from the shore. They didn't recognize that it was Jesus at the time. And he said to them, cast your nets on the right side of the boat and you'll catch some fish. Thinking they had nothing to lose, that's what they did. And when they did, they were unable to pull in the haul because, because of the large number of fish. The Apostle John knew immediately it was Jesus, and he said, It's the Lord to Peter. And Peter, always impulsive, jumped into the water and he swam to shore. The others brought in the catch. They brought some fish to Jesus, who had a fire uh, going, and they all ate breakfast together. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of John. Notice there's no mention of the name that Jesus gave to him, Peter, the rock. He calls him by his his given name, Simon, son of John. Do you love me more than these? Jesus calls Peter by his, by his full name. Now, when I was a boy, and I would hear my mother say, J. Patrick Hurley, I knew the jig was up. And I'm suspecting that Peter knew the jig was up, too, when he heard a son, a Simon, son of John. However, it also brought into question Peter's title of the rock. It was like asking him, did you forget your human weaknesses? Did you forget what it was like before I saved your eternal soul? You know what? I think we would all do well to ask ourselves those very questions and to do so often because we all have a tendency to forget that time in our lives when we were without hope. And but for the grace of God, we would still be without hope. Jesus asked, do you love me more than these? It's a significant uh, question, but it's also ambiguous. Do you love me more than these? Well, these what? Do you love me more than, than these disciples? Remember, before Peter denied Jesus three times, he had claimed to love Jesus so much that he would lay down his life for him, saying, even if all of these fall away from you, I never will. One day... Peter would lay down his life for Jesus, but so, but so far, that was not the case at all, was it? Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than, than these things uh, around you? Remember, it was Peter who initiated the idea uh, for all of the disciples to go fishing. Was he now leaving the ministry to go back to his, to his former trade? Do you love me more than these boats? Do you love me more than these nets? Uh, do you love me more than the sea or this whole fishing enterprise? I suppose Jesus could ask all of us the exact same question. Do you love me more than your comfortable lifestyle? Do you love me more than your status in the community or, or at, at your job? Do you love me more than the prestige that, that people uh, give to you? Do you love me uh, more than the popularity that you receive at school? Uh, do you love me more than your paycheck, more than your bank account, more than your real estate? Do you love me more than your vices of alcohol and drugs and whatever else it might be? 
pornography? You love me more than your home, your family? Do you love me more than these? You see, Jesus is not interested in Peter's profession of love any more than he is interested in your profession or my profession of love because anyone, anyone can say, I love the Lord. I'm a Christian. I hear it all the time. Oh, yeah, Pastor, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I love the Lord. But where's the evidence? Uh, where's the proof? Where's the fruit? Didn't Jesus say you will know them by their fruits? We, we hear politicians say all the time, oh, yes, I, I, I'm a good Christian person. And yet, by their actions, they couldn't possibly mean what they say. To affirm Jesus is Lord is the height of hypocrisy unless a person is, is obedient to the word of God. Jesus is interested in Peter's proof of love just as he's interested in your proof and my proof. Like his half-brother, James, would one day write, show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Jesus is asking, do you love me more than whatever these may be to you? Because listen to me, and this is important. Jesus will not stand in second place for anyone or anything, including you. Peter did not want a crucified Lord, but Jesus had been crucified. Could Peter now really be devoted to him? Uh, was Peter uh, ready to love Jesus as he is and not as he wished him to be? Are you? Peter answers, yes, Lord. You know that I love you. With the fire still burning where the fish were cooked, I wonder, I wonder as Jesus asked uh, Peter, uh, do you love me more than these? I wonder if Peter thought about the fire he huddled around on that night when a servant girl examined him and said, this man was with him, and him, of course, being Jesus who had just been arrested and was standing at least within earshot. And Peter answered, woman, I don't know him. A little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. That is, one of Jesus' disciples. Defiantly, Peter answered, man, I am not. About an hour later, someone else said, certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter growled, I don't know what you're talking about. And as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. I wasn't there. I didn't see it. But I'm pretty certain I would not want the Lord looking into my soul after I had just denied him three times. Dr. Luke then tells us Peter went out and wept bitterly. Do you love me more than these? As they sat there, I believe Peter bowed his head in shame, for he had learned his lesson. And he answered Jesus, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus replied, feed my lambs. In other words, serve me. And what about you folks here today? What about you folks watching on uh, Facebook or later on this week on YouTube? What about you? Do you love Jesus more 
than these, whatever these are for you? Yet Jesus wasn't through, and a second time he asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? There he goes with that full name business again. Jesus is asking Peter, in essence, forget about what, what forget about any comparisons of what other people think, of what other people say, of what other people do, of what other people believe. Forget about that. Do you love me? Isn't that the bottom line for all of us? When I, was, when I gave my life and faith to Christ, I meant it. I truly, truly did. But, <laughs> but I hadn't sold out to Jesus by a long shot. Uh-uh. And by and large, it was still all about me. I didn't care if anyone else hadn't been made right with God. I didn't care if anybody else got right with God. I was right with God, and that's all that mattered. And for a few months in my so-called uh, Christian life, I straddled the fence. I'd show up uh, for church, even sang in the choir, but I did so with bloodshot eyes and a hangover. And though I knew I had asked Christ into my life, I had no real peace. No peace at all. You see, you cannot invite God's spirit into your life and continue living your life any old way that you want to do so. When you do that, you grieve the Holy Spirit and he's going to have none of it. You, you can't... You can't, live your li you, you can't live a life in, in faith and, uh, and have it be all about you and, and yourself and having things your way. Burger King is no longer an option. When you give your life and faith to Christ, your life is no longer your own. You have been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. No longer is your life. All about you. And all about your ways. It's about Jesus and his way because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by him. And by the way, uh, God's thoughts and God's ways are not our ways and our thoughts, are they? I finally told my pastor, I said, I, I can't lead this kind of lifestyle any longer and not be leaving the church. That weekend, along with several uh, so-called friends, at least I thought they were friends at the time, we, uh, we all went out on a binge and we got going Friday night and uh, it got pretty wild. I don't remember most of the weekend to tell you the truth, but we ended up in a, uh, in a bar in Ocala, Florida. And it was about three, four o'clock in the afternoon. I was sitting at that bar. I had a drink in front of me as I had had a drink in front of me the whole weekend. And all of a sudden I came under a, a, a deep Holy Spirit conviction and I said to myself, wait a minute. Didn't you not that long ago commit your life and faith to Jesus Christ? Didn't you say that you loved him and, and you wanted uh, to serve him? Well, how much do you love him? A lot? A little bit? Any at all? Because when you love someone, you want to do something for them. You want to serve them in some shape or fashion. I got up from the bar and I walked out to my car. I sat behind the wheel and I prayed. And here's what I, basically what I asked God. 
I said, Lord, I can't do this. I can't live my life this way any longer, but if you will help me, I'll do what you ask, and I'll do the best that I can. And guess what? God helped me. God helped me. It wasn't easy then. It's not easy today. But the Lord helped me then, and he has helped me all along the way, and that was more than 40 years ago. And here's something that I know about each and every one of you. Each and every one of you that you may not even know uh, for yourself. If you will ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart to save your soul and to help you, he will. He will. And you don't have to take my word for it. You can take his because it's always true. It's always true. And that's not, and isn't that the question that Jesus was asking Peter? Do you love me? Do you love me enough to trust me at my word? Do you love me enough to obey my word? Do you love me enough to live your life for me? And again, Peter answers, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. In the first question, the Lord challenged the superiority of Peter's love. In the second question, Jesus challenged Peter's claim of having an affectionate love for him. But then a third time, Jesus asked Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus had asked him a third uh, time, do you love me? And I believe the question was meant to hurt for a positive outcome. For there are times when hurting helps, when sorrow has, has value to it. Wordsworth wrote, a deep distress has humanized my soul, and many of us need just that. Peter answers Jesus, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. In other words, you are the omniscient God. You know everything. As the psalmist asked rhetorically, where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I hide from your presence? If I ascend up into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost part of the sea, even there shall your hand lead me and your right hand shall hold me. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, Lord, is hidden from you. All of Peter's presumptions about himself were now all gone, and the Lord accepted that. And he said to Peter, feed my sheep. In other words, get busy with what I've called you to do. Get busy with sharing my love with a world in need. Uh, Get busy helping those who can't help themselves. Get busy feeding the hungry. Uh, Get busy comforting uh, the the struggling. Get busy uh, with with the lonely and, and bring joy into their lives. Take my word to a world in need. Peter's denial happened before a fire, and now his confessions take place around a fire. Three denials, three confessions, and three gracious commissions. 
what Jesus makes abundantly clear to Peter and hopefully to you and me is that our greatest priority must demonstrate itself in our love for Christ and for one another. Because that's what changes individuals. That's what changes families. That's what changes uh, church congregations. That's what changes communities. That's what changes nations. It's not an empty profession of our love for Christ and others, but a love that proves itself in a life of obedience over and over and over and over. As Jesus once asked his own disciples, why call me Lord, Lord, not do the things that I say. Jesus takes Peter and you and me back to the Shema where Moses wrote, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, is one. And you are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Then we are to love one another as Christ has loved us. Us. Loving God through faith in Christ is the greatest priority for any of us, and without love, our service, indeed, our very lives are rendered useless, empty, and meaningless. But with love, the gates of hell cannot prevail against us. How did the Apostle Paul? Say it to the church at Corinth. Though I speak with the tongues of men, of angels, and have not love, I'm become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and give my body to be burned and have not love, it profits me nothing. It was said of Mother Teresa when uh, she was wiping the wounds of someone who would not be in this world for much longer that she acted as though she were wiping the wounds of Jesus. When she scrubbed a floor, she was scrubbing Jesus' floor. What about you? What about you here today? When Jesus asks, do you love me? Can you answer with Peter? Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Well, do you? Do you really? What? Or maybe I should ask, who? is your greatest priority, and what proof will you offer of it? Father, help us to come to that place where we know that there is no greater priority than to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind, and then to get busy with taking care of your sheep and seeing your will accomplished here on earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to have a time of invitation now, and I'll ask my deacons to stand uh, in the corners of the church. So if you want to pray with one of them, or if you just want to come to the altar, as, as Darren was mentioned earlier, you can, you can do that. I'll be standing here as well. I don't know what your need is today, but God loves you, and he will meet that need if you will ask him. But he wants you to step out in faith. So if God is speaking to your heart today, uh, you come. We, we don't need to be in a hurry. We're still going to baptize everybody and have the Lord's Supper and all of that. But this is, this is most important. So let's stand as we sing our invitation hymn.
I don't know if we have uh, anything special we need to do uh, for the candidates. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Good morning. Um, I have the honor and pleasure as to um, interview these three candidates. And um, like Darren said, it's, it's not, um, it isn't a coincidence um, that I am getting to do this. It wasn't planned. David is out today. But I am so honored um, that I have been asked to do this. Xavier, I had in um, Wednesday night Bible studies. Um, several years ago, and um, my, has he grown. Time flies, as we get older, time flies. And when I saw Xavier and I looked up, I was like, when did you get so tall? Milan and LaVon um, were our neighbors. Um, to my mom, when my mom was living, their mom's neighbors, and they were so, so good about going over and checking on Aunt Pauline and um, Louie. Um, that was my brother, Tracy. They would go over with, with their grandmom, Gail, and if they saw mom out in the yard, they would go check on her. And I had the privilege of one Saturday spending the afternoon when I was working over at mom's um, with, um, with Milan, and Gail said, Ask, send him back over to the house if he's bothering you, said he'll talk you to death. And I thought, we made a good, good match. We made a good match because other than Darren, I didn't know there was anyone else that could talk as much as I do. So we did, we bonded that day and became friends ever since. So um, let's start with Xavier. Come on up, hon. Come on this way, honey. We got to get you voted in before you go down in water. <laughs> it is my honor and my privilege, Xavier, to um, ask you a few questions. Um, first of all, this was the most important decision that you will ever make in your life. And don't let anyone ever tell you it's not, because it is. Where you spend your eternity makes a difference. And that goes as well for children as it does we adults. Um, so I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and um, I want you to answer yes. Um, first of all, you have already made your profession of faith by coming forward and um, saying you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And um, so now I'm going to ask you, do you believe that Jesus came to this world, was born as a babe, and died on the cross for your sins? Yes, ma'am. Do you want to be baptized? Yes, ma'am. Do you want to become a member of Samaria Baptist Church? Yes, ma'am. Amen. Brother moderator, this is my motion that we accept Xavier Robinson as a candidate for baptism as well as a member of Samaria Baptist Church. You, you've heard the motion, uh, second by Stephen Adkins, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any discussion? All those in favor, make it known by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Stand, stand, stand. Okay. Those, those in favor, please stand if you're able. Look at that. Thank you. All those opposed, please stand. The motion carries. Okay, honey, you can go sit down, and you'll be baptized in a few minutes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Milan and LaVon. Where's Milan? In my, here's my LaVon. <laughs> my little buddies. <laughs> we're going to start with LaVon first. Honey, again, like I asked, we're going to ask both of you some questions. We're going to take you one at a time. So we'll start with you, LaVon. You've made your profession of faith by saying you believe um, Jesus, you've asked Jesus into your heart, and you did that a couple of Sundays ago as well, right? So now I'm going to ask you, do, be, do you believe that Jesus was born as a babe into this world and died um, for your sins? Do you accept him as your Lord and Savior? You've already said you do. So now do you want to be baptized? 
and do you want to become a member of Samaria Baptist Church? Amen, amen. Brother moderator, it is my motion that we accept LaVon Allen as a candidate for baptism as well as a member of Samaria Baptist Church. You've heard the motion uh, for LaVon Allen. Is there a second? Second by Robin Stewart. Is there any discussion? All right, all those in favor of this motion, please stand. Thank you. All those opposed, please stand. The motion carries. Okay, we'll be back up in a few minutes. Okay, honey, same thing. All right. You came forward a few Sundays ago and, and said you had asked Jesus into your heart and wanted him to be your Lord and Savior, right? Amen. Okay. So again, um, do you believe Jesus was born as a babe in this world and died on the cross for your sins? Yes. Would you like to be baptized? Yes. <laughs> and would you like to become a member of Samaria Baptist Church? Yes. Awesome. Brother moderator, this is my motion again that we accept uh, Milan Allen as a candidate for baptism as well as a member of Samaria Baptist Church. You've heard the motion for Milan Allen. Is there a second? Michelle. Who was that? Michelle? Michelle. Okay, Michelle Sweeney, second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please stand. Thank you. All of those opposed, please stand. The motion carries. Okay, awesome. There we go. There we go. And as these three are baptized, um, we will become, when they come out of that water, we will become their brothers and sisters in Christ. And I encourage each and every one of us to support these young ones because if you go back and think about the day when you were baptized we had a wonderful support system we may not have understood everything back then and sometimes we still don't understand everything so we're learning just as much as these young ones are so again support them encourage them wrap your arms around them and be there not only for these three but for each other as well as we travel this road called life. Amen. Amen. We're doing this right. Yeah, okay. Uh, a couple of things I want to... Uh, about you know uh, uh, these are young people and uh, you know uh, when, when a young person says to me that I love the Lord and I understand that He died for my sins, there's, there's not a whole lot that I can argue with about that. And uh, uh, and but they are young and they're immature in many ways. But that's where you and I must come in. Uh, we must be that, that mentor. We must be that person that comes uh, alongside of them and helps them to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. So uh, as, as Esther had said, uh, show your support. Show your love. Uh, let them see Jesus in you. It'll, it'll make all the difference in their journey. It really will. And uh, so, uh, in, in baptism, the immersion of the believer symbolizes his or her death to sin and their resurrection to a new life in that most personal salvation experience. It's an act of commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. In baptism, the believer identifies with Jesus just as Jesus identified with us when he was baptized. He didn't need to be baptized, and yet to show us the way. And remember, he is the way. 
Baptism is a public confession, and it shows the believer's death to sin and their determination uh, to live for him. Uh, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe whatsoever I have commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Uh, to uh, begin with, uh, with uh, Levant. I told her she could go first today, and so, uh, so Levon, come on. Well, give me your hand too, okay? And we'll walk you down. Okay. I remember what I told you to do with Amy. Good, but not yet. Not yet. Levon, in obedience to the commands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's people said, amen. Bless you. Come on up. Come on up. Okay, Milan, you've been, you've been asking me all day. Come on. Your turn. Your turn. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Don't die. Don't die then. All right, you ready? There you go. I'm not ready for you yet. Oh, hang on. Hang on one second. All right. Okay, Milan. In obedience to the commands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and upon your profession of faith in him, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, Amen. Come on. Sorry, buddy. Sorry. Good. Good job. Okay, and last but not least, Xavier. Wait till Darren gets over here, if you will. All right. Okay, be careful. Proud of this young man. you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and God's people said, Amen. 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 Let me help you out. Can you make it? our baptism again and let's give our, our newly members a clap of praise and there is still room so again if you have not made your profession of faith um, please please see someone before you leave today because our tomorrows aren't guaranteed 
So at this time, while we're waiting for our candidates to come back, we're going to be favored with a special by our Montez family. Y'all sing along with us, okay? We're saying how great thou art, because he is great. Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made. see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. Then sings my soul. Montez family 
And we all know how great our God is. You just look around every day. Look to your left, look to your right. That's how good our God is. So um, now we're going to ask you if you'll stand and sing while we're still waiting for our, our um, members to come back. If you'll stand and we're going to sing hymn number 426, Victory in Jesus. Baptized in water. 
Th oh, 362, thank you. I'll look it up. 362. 362, okay. <clears throat> to uh, present uh, these young people with their uh, Bibles and their certificates. And uh, uh, coming first, we'll have uh, LaVon uh, and uh, uh, 
Gail Atkins will present the Bible, and uh, Summer uh, Zitt will uh, present the certificate. I'm so proud of you that you have accepted Jesus into your heart and became a member of the church. Over the years, I've heard people say, this Bible is a road map. I didn't know what they were talking about when I was younger. The Bible is a road map. But as you read it, you understand that it is a road map. These words in here will get you to heaven. As you grow older, you read it, you will understand some of it. You'll never understand it all, because even Pastor Jay don't even know that. <laughs> and we all will never understand it. But this Bible is a precious book. It's the most precious book in the whole wide world. I want you to read it, and we'll help you read it too, as you grow older. So what I have to say is for both LaVon and Milan, I think it is so special to see brother and sister coming together at the same time to be baptized. I, my heart is truly full to be able to witness this. And, you know, we as adults, you know, we try to be good examples, but I found over and over that, you know, the children, like, Y'all are more examples to us. You know, y'all have that faith. Y'all show bravery, the excitement. Y'all show, I want to be more like you guys. So I have a prayer today. It comes from Ephesians 3, 16 through 19. You can read with me. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So your certificate says... This certifies that LaVon Bamari Allen received Christian baptism on the 16th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2023, Samaria Baptist Church. Aww, congratulations, baby. LaVon, this is just to put your Bible in, and it has some other stuff in there that the church wants you to have too all right god bless you dear god bless you thank you all right okay you two stay up here and uh milan come on up milan it gives me great pleasure to give you this bible to read um, we've read the Bible together. You brought me a Bible one day and asked me to read it to you. And I looked at it and I said, babe, I can't read this. He said, you don't know how to read? I said, not that little testament. <laughs> Couldn't even see the words. But in here you have bigger words. <laughs> so we'll read it to, we can read it together and you can learn a lot from this. And Pastor Jay and all, everyone in here will help you in your daily walk with Christ. Me and your mom will do our best. But <laughs> We might fall a little short. <laughs> you know, but we'll do our best and read this, and you will understand some of the stories in it one day. Love you. Here you go. 
All right, Milan. So this is your certificate here. Certificate of baptism. This certifies that Milan Kwamari Allen was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at Samaria Baptist Church on April 16, 2023 by Pastor Jay Hurley. Congratulations. Here you go, buddy. I'm sorry. I, I, I get... I get to watching you, and then I, I don't pay attention to what else I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. You got everything? Can you get it? All right. Let's do this another way. You got it? There you go. Take it. Take it away. Take it away. All right. Okay. Last but not least, and by the way, the two of you have to come back up in a minute, but uh, Xavier, uh, if you would come, and uh, uh, Maria Brown, uh, his mother, is coming, and Danny Atkins will present the certificate. Maria will present the uh, Bible. I am, um, I'm very proud of you, and um, I don't know if I'm more proud or more excited. Um, this book right here, through life, everything, I don't care whether it's believing that your car is going to start when you get in, everything through life is based on faith, based on it's going to go right, it's going to work out, I'm going to get this, whatever it is, it's, it's based off believing that it's going to happen. And um, this has everything you need in it. No, no matter where life takes you, no matter what life throws at you, there's something in here that can give you comfort, that can give you peace, understanding, and the faith to keep pushing. Um, I always want you to go to this. Whatever it is, and find comfort in knowing that this has it whatever you need, and I'm so proud of you. And I have the honor of uh, uh, giving you the certificate, and uh, I'm just so happy for you. I'm more happy than anything. I'm happy for all the, all that were baptized today. I'm just so overjoyed. But um, I'd like to read first the certificate before I say anything else. And this says, Certificate of Baptism. This certifies that Xavier Zias Wayne Robinson was baptized in the name of the Father. The Son and the Holy Spirit. It's the Mary Baptist Church on April 16, 2023 by Pastor Jay Hurley. And uh, I know you've come to me, you've, you've had your struggles, you've had your questions, and I just felt honored that you came to me. But not only me, but you have this whole congregation, Pastor Jay, the deacons, the Sunday school teachers here to help you grow. And in Proverbs 22, six said, train a child when they are young, but when they are old, they won't part from it. So it's important that we support these kids. As Pastor Jay said, uh, Deacon Esther said earlier today, that we support these kids, help them grow, because they're going to have trials, they're going to have tribulations, but just to know that Jesus Christ died for your sins and he rose from the third day, every second of every day, he will be with you and call to him, because he's going to be there for you. And I just thank for Thank God for being in your life. And let's continue to support all these candidates here, those that were baptized today, and help them grow. Amen. Right. Amen. Xavier, I want you to stay up here. Give your, give your mom the Bible. I'm going to give her this too, but 
anyway, it just has some stuff in there that the church wants you to have, okay? Now, uh, Levon and uh, Malak, come on back up. Come on back up. You stand here next to Xavier. You stand here next to your sister. And on behalf of the Samaria Baptist Church, God's family here in Charles City, I want to give you the right hand of fellowship, okay? And welcome to the church. Welcome to God's family. Welcome to the church. Welcome to God's family. Welcome to the church. Welcome to God's family. And God bless you all. God bless you all. Okay, you can go ahead and sit down. All right. I believe at this time we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper, and uh, uh, before we do that, I'm going to ask uh, Martha Atkins to uh, pray over the uh, uh, over the cup and the bread. Okay. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, as we come for you today. I want to thank you for this beautiful day that you created for us, dear God, and for st instilling in our hearts a desire to come out to your house of worship to today. Thank you for these young members, dear God, and help us to be there for them to answer questions. Help us to be an example for them and live the life that you would have us to live. And I pray, dear God, as we prepare our hearts to partake of this communion, that we be reminded of the pain and the suffering you took on the, your broken body when you took on our sins that we may have life of salvation the pain that you suffered when you were separated from God because you knew no sin until then. Help us to be worthy of that, dear God. And I pray, dear God, that we'll, we'll remember each day of our life that sacrifice that you made. Thank you, dear God, for loving us, for forgiveness, for protection, dear God. And I pray as we go out this week, that we will find opportunities to share your love and your word with others that they may, too, have a life with you. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 This time I'd ask the deacons to come.
We welcome all faiths to join us in the Lord's Supper, uh, all Christian faiths, that is. And uh, uh, if you don't know Christ, we'd ask you to refrain because, uh, <clears throat> because it brings dishonor to, uh, to, the, to, God's, uh, to God's word. And, uh, but if you have asked Christ into your life, then we invite you to partake with us. And if you've never done this before with one of these, it's, uh, you bend that flap and this, you get the wafer out and then uh, it's a little difficult to get the second one open, but uh, nevertheless, it will open eventually. And uh, For I received from the Lord what I passed on to you, the Lord Jesus. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And in another verse from Matthew, it says, when they sang a hymn, they went out. And that's what we plan to do. So uh, not sure what the hymn is here, but uh, uh, let's stand and be dismissed. door so people can greet you on their way out, okay? And uh, Miss Audrey Holmes is going to uh, dismiss us in prayer this morning, so let's bow. And cause your face to shine upon us, that our ways may be known upon earth, and thy saving health among all nations.